film. Behave. Or. What's up, plant nerds? My name's Rachel, and this is Heart Shaped Leaves. Today, we are going to be talking about my top five favorite house plants that I picked up locally around me. Didn't order them online. They aren't hard to find for me here in Arkansas, so I thought I'd show you guys my most favorite local house plants. Okay, on the bottom of the list, but still on the list, is this Euphorbia Tanzanian Zipper. And the reason why it's on my, oh, by the way, I forgot to tell you guys, I got my nose ring re-pierced over the weekend and it is hella, hella sore, which is why we're just gonna film in here today because I can't, mm -mm. I don't know why filming in there makes me feel like I'm gonna hit myself, but it does, so. New piercing alert. This Euphorbia is my Wow. This Euphorbia is my favorite one because it didn't die. I've had a lot of deaths in my little bathroom window seal where I was trying to keep some cacti and succulents and this guy is living. And not only is he living, but he has a very intense type of variegation up the side of it. I totally get why they call it uh, the zipper because it's really, really neat to look at. And this is the first cactus that I've successfully not killed. And I think you guys seen me bring home a lot of cacti. Uh, you can see on the top bits here, I'm sure I'll be showing like close up footage over here on the side. You can see the lime green bits are from where it grew for me actually. So, and not only that, but it actually has a little teeny tiny baby coming up over there on the side. So that's pretty exciting too. I picked up these really cute ceramic pots on Amazon. Um, I don't have them linked, but maybe I can at some point. I'm not sure, uh, but I had to send them back. Ooh, watch it. I had to send them back like four, four times. I'm not joking because every time they would show up broken. So then after that, I just kind of gave up on buying um, ceramic pots online, but I should give it another shot. For sure i should definitely give it another shot but anyways this is my number five favorite common locally bought houseplant next up on the list is this begonia sinbad and i picked this up at a local nursery i think it was parks brothers nursery and it's seen better days don't make fun of her she's a little she's a little bare around the bottom bits but this plant really speaks to like that bonsai type of look and it's just so out there. It's got such weird, it's due for a prune. I understand that and I need to prune it back and just start all over and get more branching out of it, but I can't cut it. It's so cool the way it's growing. It really takes up a corner in my plant room. It doesn't need super duper high light. So it just, it serves a lot of purposes. It looks like a little piece of, it looks like art to me. So until it starts getting super gangly, then I'll cut it back and then we'll start over from, from scratch essentially. Showing you guys side footage over here, but these little leaves, I think I showed close-ups of them last time I did a video, but that just shows you that I'm kind of obsessed with them a little bit. They look like a, they have almost a makeup type of highlighter type sheen on them. And uh, the blooms, it blooms all the time. It blooms all the time for me. All the blooms are currently dried up because I said it blooms all the time, but it legit does. It's, it's always putting out these super beautiful white iridescent looking little flowers on it. So this is a, a great find found it at a local place um i think i probably paid like three dollars and 99 cents for this plant and i've i've got two others that i've made from this plant and i'm going to propagate more when i do prune it down and i will keep them because they're awesome and i just they can grow in my bathroom portions of my living room and there are places that i've never showed you guys like i've never showed you guys my bathroom plants before that I could have filmed, but you know, who really, like you have to really scrub your bathtub if you wanna film your bathroom tour. So that's, that's, that's hardcore and that's a lot. So, but it is something we'll do in the future. Anywho, Begonia Sinbad. Okay guys, so number three on my list is my Begonia Pink Streak from the Jurassic Rex collection. And luckily for us today, 
she is blooming I don't know if you guys can see that through there I'll do some close-ups over on the side but this is also a plant that I got from a local nursery I think it was Parks Brothers it may have been New Myers, my other favorite local nursery that I go to but I have just been really blown away with this plant it's one of those that I'm always like, babe, I can't believe that I got this plant for so cheap, you know? And it's also grown. The leaves have gotten so big. So when I first got this plant from either Parks Brothers or New Myers, it was very small. It was a plug, I'm sure. They didn't sell big pots of anything. So this girl has graduated from, you know, like a four inch pot to uh, the six inch pot. And it looks like I could probably repot her at some point. But from what I hear from some begonia chat groups and some research that I've done myself is that begonias themselves don't, they don't really appreciate a really a bigger pot until they absolutely have to have it. So, look at my hair. So this one, you can see the rhizome above the soil here isn't super huge yet. You know, it's not to the point where I feel like I need to repot it, but the leaves are getting quite large. Another one that's just always blooming. There you go. You can see it really good through there. The texture of the leaves is they're very thick. The edges feel really rough and um, like you can feel like the little hairs that are on the leaves on the edges of it. The younger ones feel a lot softer, but they also feel a lot more crispy. Like you could just, if you went like this, you could really snap the leaf interior there. I leave this in here in my bedroom. I've, I'm sure you guys seen plant tours of mine before. It sits in the floor. It only gets the ambient light from uh, my plant racks and my other lights that I have. I've also never had a pest with any of the other plants that I've talked about so far. And I don't think the ones that I'm going to talk about in the future either. That's why they're also my favorite plants because they're problem free girls. Okay. So number two on my list is my red Maranta plant. I don't have this plant under any direct lighting whatsoever. I do have some lights outside of my window, but the majority of the light is just ambient light from the lights that I have on my rack. So, and if you guys have any questions about that, I'll link a video in the corner of the screen where I talk about what lights I use and things like that. I keep my bedroom humidity, I think the lowest that it ever gets is around 50, but I try to keep it beefed up, you know, to 56, 60, upper 60s if I can. Sometimes I don't feel like filling up my humidifiers that often, so I won't turn it up that high constantly but they are on 24 7. I've had a lot of people ask me that in the comments. How long do I run my humidifiers and it's 24 7. And the air is constantly moving in my bedroom also. At night I run this big box fan that I'm sure you can see in the frame. It's cute though it's purple and my husband also has one on his side of the bed and we also run the ceiling fan so at night it's quite a hurricane in here and everybody has to deal with it. All the plants have to deal with it. So when there is good air movement in the room, that's a good thing for your plants. All of my plants have got some sort of benefits from the high humidity and the air movement that happens here in the room. The fact that it's so huge. I picked this plant up and it was in a very small version at Home Depot. And uh, this was when I first got into like knowing that houseplant collecting was even a thing. I had houseplants before that, but I didn't know that houseplant collecting was a thing. So when I first found out, I went to Lowe's and I saw this plant and I was like, oh, that's a prayer plant that I saw someone talking about and I have to have it. And I'm so glad that I got it. It's been relatively fuss free. It grows and grows. I've taken several cuttings of it to, to give to friends um neighbors not neighbors i don't talk to my neighbors what am i talking about i meant friends friends that have come over here i've given cuttings of this plant i know that people have a hard time with them being full like in the center but i got lucky with mine and i bought it and it was really full in the center it just kind of grown out on all sides since then and we have some crispy bits it seems like from a long long time ago but not really since then you know she's looking really really cute Got some little, little yellow bits right there, but not too bad. Not too bad. And she takes up like a whole half of a shelf. 
So really love my red Maranta. I have to be careful with my glasses because if they slide down too far, they hit my new nose ring and I, boy y'all, about to jump out of my skin. It hurts so damn bad. That's number two. That's number two. I don't know if I've been saying these backwards or not. I'm an idiot. I don't know. Anyways, stepping our way up to my number one favorite local house plant. My number one favorite house plant that I found locally is this Begonia Griffin. And I picked it up at Sherem's Garden Center in Fort Smith, Arkansas, located in the town next to mine. And when I saw it, I thought, oh my gosh, I absolutely love the, li the little leaves on this one. It reminds me of the really sensitive terrarium begonia that's called Begonia pinar pinapartita or something like that. I can't remember, but this begonia, I've seen it when it grows outside and it makes this one look shameful. But I'm really impressed with how well it has grown indoors. And to be honest with you, I have not given it the best of lighting situations for its entire life. You know, sometimes this plant, even though I love it so much, has gotten like carried off or sat to the side and it never once has given me any problems. One time when I first got this plant, and I think it may have been from the nursery, no shade or anything like that, but I think it had aphids once upon a time. But since I put some, I think aphids freaked me out so bad because at the adult stage, they have wings and they can fly that I actually used a systemic pesticide on this begonia early on. So I probably need to retreat it, but it hasn't shown any signs of being reinfested since then. The shape of this begonia is a lot like my begonia Sinbad. I really appreciate how long and architectural it is. The leaves, when they first come out, are a beautiful color. They harden off and some of them get so big. I just love the uh, maple leaf shape in general when it comes to these types of begonias. Pretty much any begonia with this leaf shape, I, I kind of need it into my collection because I really think that they complement, you know, the look that I go for, which is just a jumbled up pile of everything all the time, which is not really a look, but it's a look to me. So that is my number one favorite locally found houseplant. And I just wanted to say that if you are beginning your houseplant collecting journey, I was super surprised when I went to local places like Lowe's and Home Depot, Walmart even during the spring and summer, spring and early summer time. They really are kind of stepping up their game a lot. They're carrying a lot more different, unique type of houseplants. So I'm kind of excited to visit my local stores this coming up spring and summer to see what they have. What is, is Costa Farm stepping up to their game? Are we gonna see a lot more things from Home Depot and Lowe's? Is there gonna be any variegation popping up out there? I don't know. Bonus local plant. If you guys are not giving a uh, silver sap respect that it deserves, you should because they are completely and totally pest free as far as my experience goes and they are absolutely gorgeous. I have two extremely long ones in my bathroom. I have them in my living room space. I have them all over the ceiling area in my bedroom. It's like a guaranteed, you know, do you struggle with light? Do you struggle with bugs? Do you struggle with watering issues? Do you need a plant that's going to talk right to you? That's going to be your silver satin Skindapsis pictus. It's really hard for a person with a list to say that. But anyways, you can see it back here. I have it hanging up and trailing down here behind my bed. I have them all over the house and that's a bonus plant. So I guess it's technically six, but whatever. I'm not gonna call it six because I don't like the number six. Casey just got done spending his vacation here at home. We've really been enjoying our time chillaxing. I hope that some of you got some time off during the holiday season. Winter time has been rough on you, girl. I haven't made hardly any plant orders because uh, I just don't want to spend the money and things to show up and be on the struggle bus. You know what I'm saying? I would just like to say, just like all the plant memes, I have not spent any money on plants this year, so but I have got some serious plans for 2020. Um, not like serious, like serious accumulation plans, but I have my sights set on some individual plants that I have been, that have been on my wish list for a while now and I can't 
seem to put my finger on them. So I think we'll be doing a wish list video in the future for 2020. Things that keep me up at night when I'm uh, thinking about my collection and what I would like to add to it. So you guys all have a wonderful, wonderful day. We love you so much. Remember your ABCs. Always be cute. Be good. Peace out. Later taters. Bye.